Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we are reviewing the Sire U5 short scale. Let's check this thing out. This is the Sire U5 short scale base. Coming in at $4.99, this thing is feature packed and might be one of the best short scales available right now on the market. Featuring a beautiful 5A maple veneer on top of an alder body with a nice little binding around there. This one is in a tobacco burst, but there are two other finish options available with a mint green and natural. And this is a 5A flamed maple veneer. This thing is beautiful. This is one of the nicest flames I've ever seen really. And this thing's 500 bucks. That's, that is really nice. The neck is a 30 inch scale, 20 fret, maple on maple neck with a satin finish on the back and a gloss lacquer on the front. This is a very premium looking neck and very premium feeling with a 38 millimeter nut width. This feels very similar to a full size jazz bass in terms of neck feel. It's just a short scale. Some other short scales have a really, really thin neck and it makes it, I guess, more uncomfortable to play if you're used to a full scale bass. This one is very comfortable to play, especially for a short scale, and I appreciate that. Up at the headstock, we have tuners that are surprisingly good. It's the first time I'm saying this about a Sire. The tuners are accurate, they're not too heavy, and they're... I have no complaints. The tuners that I had on my V3 that I reviewed earlier were very, very sloppy. There was a lot of play in them and it wasn't really a good experience trying to tune up that bass. However, the tuners on this, very good. And though it does have the ugly Sire headstock shape, it's not that bad on this bass. And the Sire logo, as well as the Marcus Miller text up on the headstock, is in that metallic finish. It's almost like an embossed metal underneath the finish. It's gorgeous, just like on the V5. And I think this is one of the most premium Sire instruments you can get right now, especially at the $500 price point. For electronics and hardware, we have a PJ Sire Revolution set, which are noiseless. This is a noiseless J. This thing is completely silent, and I appreciate that. Other manufacturers should take note. The knobs that are being used here on the controls are metal knobs. Even though they're push on, they are very premium feeling compared to the ones that you get on the V7, which are the same cheap plastic knobs that you see on the V3 preamp. I appreciate the use of premium materials here, especially at $500. And then finally to the bridge, it's the same type of sire four string bridge that you see on all the other mid to high level sires. Honestly, it's not a terrible bridge. I just wish it had a more standard screw pattern so you could replace it with an aftermarket high mass bridge if you so wanted to without having to drill additional holes. This bridge is set up for either a string through body or just a regular traditional stringing configuration. I'm using a string through body and using MJC nickel plated stainless steel strings, gauges 45 to 105. And these are regular long scale strings. And with the string through, I was able to get just that extra amount of slack. So these strings actually fit on here no problem. I have no issues with intonation or keeping this thing in tune and it's working great thus far. Lastly, truss rod access is down at the heel of the neck. It's easily accessible. Though it's not a wheel, I do prefer the wheel. I do appreciate that you don't need to unscrew any panels or remove anything in order to access the truss rod cavity here. So neck adjustments can easily be done on the fly if you have the appropriate Allen wrench. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does this thing sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. This is a very, very nice little short scale bass. 
This is very premium feeling and the pickups sound great. Very nice. Balance wise, this is actually quite well balanced for a base of a jazz style design with a short scale setup. Um, you have a lot of weight over here at the headstock with these tuners. These are not lightweight tuners, but overall balance wise, I do not find this thing overly neck heavy and I don't find myself uh, struggling to support the neck and focusing on that versus my playing. This is very easy to balance, especially with your arm over here. And uh, the corner over here is actually very smooth. It doesn't really cut into your arm. This is a very comfortable base to hold and play. I'm impressed. Now, just like the Sire V5, which I raved about for its premium build quality and excellent price, this is a passive instrument. That's right, there's no batteries and no preamp here. Just the pickups, passive controls, and your hands. The controls are very simple. You have a volume for the P pickup, volume for the J pickup, and a master tone control for both. However, if you did want to set this thing up with the preamp, you do have a bit of a control cavity back here, though I don't think it's big enough to fit a battery, so you'd probably need to route a separate battery box. Speaking of the back, this is what it looks like. You have a standard four bolt neck heel or four screw neck heel, just like any other style fender. You have your string through construction over here at the bridge and your satin finished neck, but your gloss fretboard. Now let's take a look at these pickups individually and start off with the neck pickup, the P. Here's the P pickup with the tone at 100%. Yeah, this thing sounds really nice. Let's go ahead and turn the tone down to about 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. Very nice. Now let's move over to the J pickup. Here's the bridge pickup with the tone at 100%. Yeah, this is a very nice sounding jazz pickup, and it's noise canceling as well, which is always appreciated in a PJ setup. Unlike a regular jazz bass setup, where the two pickups are noise canceling one another, you will get single coil hum in some scenarios when you turn down the volume on one of the pickups. However, in a PJ setup, the P is already self canceling and can't cancel out the hum of a single coil jazz pickup. 
That's why it's really important to use a noise canceling J pickup. Otherwise, you're always going to get single coil hum unless you turn off the J pickup entirely. Now, I have complained about much more expensive basses not using a noise canceling J. And I'm looking at those Sadowski Metro Express basses that are made in the Warwick China factory. Those do not have a noise canceling J, and those are $899 nearly twice as much as these things. And those were a bit of a mess too at launch. So this on the other hand, 599 noise canceling J, passive setup and great sounding all around. I think this is an excellent, excellent value. I also like that you can really get a nice funky jazz bass tone out of this bridge pickup. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the bridge pickup with the tone at 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. Very nice, very nice. One other thing to note is the articulation of all the controls is very, very smooth and very premium. I did knock the Sterling short scale Stingray for having kind of cheap feeling controls, especially compared to the USA Stingray short scale, which my friend Devin lent me. The USA Stingray short scale had very, very smooth and premium feeling controls, just like any other USA music man. However, the Sterling Stingray short scale did have a bit of a cheap feel to the controls and the articulation. They felt kind of loose and almost overly easy to articulate. It wasn't as premium of an experience. On this, however, this feels much closer to the articulation of that USA Stingray. It's very, very, very smooth throughout the entire range of the pot, which is very nice. So I got to commend them for using quality controls and pots here. Now let's bring the neck pickup back into the mix and listen to both pickups together. Here's that with the tone at 100%. Here's the tone at 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. Not bad. Let's go ahead and turn the vol. Oh, damn it. I was trying not to say not bad this whole video and I said it. Ah! Why? Because uh, some commenter bet me. Because I usually say not bad a lot. Right after <laughs> you finish playing. You all, yes, you know, you know what? Sure you go, not bad. I'm going to edit that part out. 
Very nice, very nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tone up and let's see how this thing slaps. <laughs> Yes, this thing is an excellent slapper, especially for a short scale. This PJ pickup configuration is very well balanced and sounds great slapped. Let's slap this thing one more time with just the P pickup and see what that sounds like. Here's that with the tone at 100%. This is a slapper. This is a lot of fun. The rolled fingerboard edges, which I forgot to mention earlier, are very nice. You, uh, you notice it here, and it's definitely not a gimmick, though it's not a deal breaker if a base doesn't have it, as a lot of very premium bases don't roll the edges. I don't think it's anything that crazy, but it is, it's comfortable. It is a comfortable addition to have, especially on a base that's $500, so... I can't stretch that enough. This thing is 500 bucks. This is an excellent, excellent value. It sounds great. It's well equipped out of the box. Uh, it can take full scale strings. I mean, I put on these full scale MJC Ironworks nickel plated stainless steel, 45 to 105 is a right on here. And I had no issues with intonation or uh, keeping these things on here and keeping them solid. So this is a great playing, great sounding short scale bass. Dare I say it, the best short scale bass in this price range. Better than the Sterling Stingray short scale. Oh, <gasps> That's right. Take that back! <laughs> Never! That's right, this is better. You have the 5A quilted top. You have the much better hardware all around. You have the really nice neck with the satin finish on the back and the gloss lacquer on the fingerboard as well as this really nice metal embossed logo in the headstock underneath the finish. This thing is very, very premium looking. I would say that a lot of people would guess that this is probably twice the price it actually is based on the features it has here. So well done, Sire. You guys nailed it. You guys really nailed it here. Now, one last thing remains. Let's go ahead and throw some drums behind it. <laughs> so here are my final thoughts on the Sire U5 short scale. This thing is awesome. This thing is the best short scale, in my opinion, in the $500-ish dollar price range, and even above. I can't think of any better short scale around this price. I think it's better and more premium feeling than the Sterling Stingray, which is a 4 out of 5 claw, in my opinion. 
And this is a much better instrument than the Squire Mustang, which is only $100 less, but in my opinion, much, much worse in terms of feel, balance, and sound. I really have no complaints. The aesthetics, the tone, the feel of the hardware, everything about this bass is extremely premium feeling. And I'm impressed. I can, I'm impressed. I can't say anything else. Now, I purchased this instrument myself. This wasn't sent to me by Sire. I am not being paid to say this at all. This is the best short scale out there right now around this price of the $500-ish price category. If you want a short scale, get this bass. Enough said. So what am I gonna rate the Sire U5? Ugh! I'm gonna rate this bass. Five claws out of five. This is the first base in the $500-ish price category that has achieved the five claw status. This is an excellent base and an excellent short scale base. I am very impressed with the build quality, the hardware, the electronics, the sound, the balance of the instrument. Uh, this is an excellent base. I have no complaints here, especially for $500. It's gorgeous. It sounds great. I can't say anything more. This is awesome. Great job, Sire. You hit it out of the park here. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Sire U5. And as always, until we groove again.